Thank you, everybody. I'm really excited to be here today to share with you a very new um, and very emerging field of uh, science and engineering called microfluidics. And I think um, this didn't e exist when I was in school. And I, I think, you know, taking the point from the previous spe speakers that um, we are at a very exciting time whereby technology and manufacturing and computing actually bringing together all these things which en enables this new tools and technology to fight against can cancer. So ca cancer, as everybody knows, is a very big pr problem. Um, the American Cancer Society has predicted that by the year 2030, there will be 22 million people um, suffering from cancer every year. So every year, the whole size of population of Australia will have contracted uh, can uh, cancer. And I think, um, you know, we, going from the previous uh, vi video, we're all very vulnerable to this. You know, the can cancer uh, affects a lot of our loved ones, and, you know, we have to do some, something ab about this. And cancer really stems from the uncontrollable division of abnormal cells. So bas basically, cancer, um, there's something wrong with the genetic code, and the cells divide uncontrollably. And what we have found, and researchers have found, is that cancer is very complex. There's no one key reason why cancer starts. We, we just don't know it. And uh, it's het heterogeneous, meaning that um, uh, uh, the, the, the way that the cancer is being diagnosed now is that um, we, we take a physical uh, tissue sample, uh, either through a needle or through a, a surgery, and we analyze this. And it's been found that cancer, because of the way the genetic code and the, is dividing, is really, really com complicated, is heterogeneous, and worst of all, it's actually dy dy dynamic. It changes over time. So the issue is that um, people always have uh, their cancer cured for a while, but it actually comes back because they actually build re resistance and using a particular drugs may not kill the en entire uh, um, um, uh, cause of the can can cancer. So right now, clinicians and oncologists probably have concluded that it's going to be a likely multi-drug approach, a multi-disciplinary uh, approach using uh, su surgery, radiotherapy, to kind of go at the whole cancer problem um, from all uh, ends of it. But the real killer is actually metastasis because the real killer is that when the cancer spreads. So in, in fact, the real reason for then the cause of cancer death, more than 80% of cancer death is actually caused when the cancer starts to spread. If it doesn't spread, um, you can actually typically live for, for decades with, without this. And um, met metastasis is really uh, caused by these cells called circling tumor cells. And these are actually cancer cells that have uh, this, uh, uh, shed from the primary tumor, and they travel in your bloodstream. So if you think, think about it, if you have a lung cancer tum tumor, um, you know, it will actually shed these cells. And uh, these cells travel in your body, find another site, and then they grow this um, other uh, uh, secondary site, and that's how the uh, cancer spreads. And the trick about this is that these cancer cells are very, very rare. They're like one of the, there's only one of these cancer cells per, uh, uh, you know, one billion in the blood. So it's like finding uh, a single person in the whole of uh, India or, or China. So it's a really a needle and hay haystack pro problem. And until now, uh, there have been uh, very various efforts trying to look at this. And uh, right now, because of the birth of microfluidics, we're actually applying this technology to be able to detect and retrieve these cells. And what it is is that microfluidics is really the study of uh, systems where extremely small volumes of uh, fluids are being hand ha handled. So typically, these are mi micro channels smaller than the width of a human hair. And what we do is that we have precision uh, pumps to push these fluids. And by looking at the uh, fluids, uh, we can actually do a lot of amazing things uh, with it. And this only came really in the, in the past uh, ten, 10 years. You know, when, when I was in, in school, there was no such field as uh, this. And I think uh, you know, it's a really nice time now that we're finally seeing the multidisciplinary, the intersection of all these technologies that en enable this to work. So it's really an uh, intersection of engineering, uh, physics, chemistry, uh, biochemistry, nanotechnology, and biotechnology. And I think um, this is a really interesting field. And what it is is that um, if you think about it, in a very, very small and controlled environment in, you know, like a sub-100 mi micron scale, in interesting things start to ha happen. Um, the forces between the surfaces and the pa particles in a fluid becomes very big because of the small, small scale. 
and there are actually these uh, uh, vortices and for forces within it um, that actually uh, allows us to actually uh, look into this and try to make use of these uh, for for forces. And what we have come up with is this uh, spiral microfluidic chip. And what it is is that um, we have designed a, a biochip that can uh, retrieve the decircling tumor cells from a standard blood draw. And here's the machine. So what we have done is that um, the uh, standard blood draw is taken from the pa patient uh, at uh, the physician's of office, 7.5 ml. Uh, we bring it to the lab and uh, we put it into a mach machine in the in in input. We load one of these uh, single-use uh, uh, biochips and we're a able to actually use these inherent forces in the microfluidic uh, space to actually retrieve these cells. So what we have found is that um, circling tumor cells, because it's not off the blood, they are typically larger and stiffer than the white blood cells and the red blood cells in our blood. And you, you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because the white blood cells and the red blood cells are designed to squeeze through and they're very, very de deformable and flexible in, in, in the capillaries. So we make use of this and by designing a chip whereby we can actually arrange this in a very, uh, arrange these in, the, in, in cell stream based on size and shape. We're able to then uh, filter this in a way that we actually uh, arrange them in a particular order. So think, think, think of this like a, free, like a freeway. So we make the, uh, the big trucks uh, stay in the right lane and the cars and then the, 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 the mo motorbikes on, on one side. So we can actually use the forces to control this in a precision way to actually do this. And you can see on the, um, um, on the top corner, we have the la larger cell being funneled uh, through this uh, out the output. And here's a picture of a certain tumor cells. So these cells are very, very rare. And what we can do is that um, we can actually uh, stain this and do a lot of studies on this. So we can actually do immunostaining, whereby you know, we put in uh, stains to kind of see you know, where these cells are from, what kind of pr proteins they have. We can do uh, fish and se se uh, sequencing, whereby you know, we can actually look at the DNA. And why this is important is because a lot of drugs now, they are actually based on the mu mutations. So if you have a particular mutation, your physician will give you a particular drug. And it's important to be able to match the right drug to your particular kind of can cancer at the right time. And of course, you can also do PCR, uh, which is another uh, um, um, genetic thing to look at pro proteins and, and other uh, um, 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 DNA and RNA strands, and uh, cell culturing. So one of the key things is that um, of our technology is that we do not use biomarkers. So these cells actually come out in the live and viable state. It's really, really exciting because we can actually grow these cells, and we've actually seen and we can study these cells. And by the rate of aggressiveness of this growth, we can even tell how um, and potentially see how, uh, how, how to treat the uh, cancer or how aggressive the, the cancer is and change treatment accordingly. So why is this impo important? Well, we actually see this as being ab able to impact the entire uh, cancer management pro process. So the presence of circling tumor cells, CTCs, um, in blood would imply that um, you actually have a, a, can, can, a cancer because t typically you, you, you don't, you're not supposed to have these uh, cancer cells traveling in, in your blood. And I think you'll be quite su surprised. The, the, the state now is that uh, it's actually quite hard to actually determine whether or not or to confirm whether or not you have can cancer. It's a big problem now because of the fact that um, you can have a Im, an Im, image and the only way to actually know whether you have cancer is actually take a physical uh, sam sample of it by, by doing surgery or sticking a, a large ne needle to your, uh, to your can cancer. We can also do cancer staging. Um, the number of CDCs actually has a shown to be a strong correlation to your stage. So by knowing the number of CDCs, you can actually have a good um, um, a, uh, idea of what is your stage in. So typically in the, in the cancer space, you have stage one and you have stage four, which is the, uh, the, 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 the worst uh, stage that you can have. And the trending of the CDCs over time is also very, very in, in interesting because you can actually see uh, whether or not the, uh, the number of CDCs go up over time or actually they drop. So a drop in CTs typically indicates that the treatment is wor wor working. We have a quite a few uh, nice um, um, anecdotal cases now in, in clinic, whereby we have been blinded to the test and we actually see that these uh, um, um, cells drop. And when we actually look back at the clinical results, it has been shown that they have gone for a, a, re a resection of the tumor or they have been put on drugs. 
The other one which I, I really see the big potential is the uh, personalized cancer tre treatment, and it's really to analyze the CDCs. As Matt mentioned, there are new generation drugs right now that target specific mu mutations when you have a particular uh, um, the disease type. And the Im importance of not being able, the importance of being able to get to these cells in a non-invasive way through a simple blood draw is really key because you can actually do a lot of things to analyze whether or not the resistance has come back or the cancer has developed um, new resistance or new mutations which you want to change the drug. And of course, um, we can also use it for post-cancer uh, monitoring, meaning that if uh, the CDCs come back, and you, you can probably have this as a, ru a routine test, which we, we hope to be, um, the emergence of the CDCs coming back would in, in the indicate that the disease coming back. But at the same time, because we have these CDCs that we have uh, isolated later, we can also look at the drugs and what is the uh, appropriate treatment ter ter therapy that we can do. So the traditional gold standard is really to make a treatment decision after you have taken out your solid tumor. And I think what we are hoping to do is to do with our system, uh, which is called the clear cell system, is to do repeatable uh, liquid bi biopsy. And instead of just doing the ones at the, at the very first onset of disease uh, confirmation, we're able now to actually look at it um, not only at once, but over, over time and adjust the treatment uh, accordingly. And uh, really uh, being an enabling tool for uh, real-time uh, disease mo monitoring. So where are we now with this te technology? I'm really ha happy to say that we're actually um, um, in uh, clinical work now. We actually have uh, launched uh, a CDC re research core at the National Cancer Center in Singapore and SGH. We're processing uh, these sa samples every, every day, day now. And uh, we're really nice um, uh, and very encouraging uh, preliminary day data. It will still take some time, but I, I think um, the clinicians are really ec excited about this technology because now you know, they have another tool now which they can actually really look, look at the uh, the disease, how it's going, and because of the fact that cancer is so complex and heterogeneous and evolving, is really a, a, a nice tool for, for, for them to, to, to use. So in summary, I think we're looking at the personalizing uh, cancer treatment, which I think will be the next uh, thing, because I think uh, nobody's DNA is the same or the physiology is the same, so, so mine is very different from everybody else and, and you're the different. And of course, um, having this, this tool will, it will be a able to en en enable uh, the right matching of the drugs at the, at the right time. And of course, um, we really uh, believe that, uh, and uh, you know, I have a, a team of uh, 20 year old people working really, really hard to push this to, uh, to, to, to clinical use. Um, and uh, our whole aim and passion is to really uh, drive this towards uh, bringing cl clarity to ca cancer management. And with that, uh, thank you. Thank you.